Hi there, today is Tuesday, November the 7th. We're reading John chapter 17, uh, right at the end of this long, several chapters long uh, discussion in various locations he's been giving with his disciples. He finishes in John 17 with a prayer. And he prays, the headings tell you, if you read it in the, the Bible here, maybe you have an orange Bible just like this one here that we're using for the year. Uh, it, it tells you, he prays to be glorified for his disciples and then for all believers right before he goes to be arrested. This is right on that night of the Last Supper and all these things are happening. It says here, if I could pick a couple of verses out just to share with you. In verse 16, chapter 17, verse 16, Jesus prays for his followers, his disciples. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. This idea of the followers of Jesus then and now, we're not of the world the way we see it around us. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. And how do we do that? How do we wrestle? Do we, do we completely withdraw? So we, we put our head in the sand and we live as a, a segregated community, not of the world. We're here physically, we're not of it. Do we do that? And in, in, in my opinion, abdicate our responsibility to reach them with the gospel of Jesus? I, I don't think so. Or do we, in our pursuit of being relevant and efficient, do we dive so far in that it's almost hard to tell that we're not really of the world at all? We seem like we're just like everybody else. I don't, I don't think so that either. Uh, rather, I think we can live in such a way that we interact with people that are not like us. I live in America, but I am not an American. Not first anyway. I mean, I'm an American because I live here, but I am uh, first and foremost a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. I could uproot my family right now and we can move uh, to uh, some European nation or Asian nation and buy a house and move in and get a job and live there, that doesn't make me a citizen of that nation. I'm a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. I'm missioned there as a missionary to serve and to love and to preach the gospel of Jesus. View yourself that way here. You're not of the world. You live here. You have some responsibilities as a part of this nation, but you're a citizen of heaven. And by that, you have a greater responsibility, obligation to fulfill the, the service of your kingdom, of your king. You're not of the world. You're just in it. He says in verse 18, as you sent me into the world, speaking to the Father, I have sent them into the world. Uh, can you hear our phrase? You are sent in the middle of that. You are sent. As, as Jesus was sent into the world, his followers are sent out into the world every time we gather together. Every time we finish one of these videos here, we finish with the phrase, you are sent. Have a great day. Don't just, don't just blow that off though. Go have a great day serving the Lord. You are sent to go out and to be in the world, not of it, but in it, on mission. When you go to work, your primary responsibility is not what your boss says. Your, your first responsibility is to make disciples serving your boss there is just a vehicle to do so. He says in verse 20, my prayer though, it's not just for them alone. He's looking maybe at the 12 disciples. It's not just for these guys. I pray for those who will believe in me through their message. For everybody else who will ever become a believer because of what these guys preach, that's who I'm praying for. Did you know that Jesus prayed for you in the Bible? Matthew 17 verse 20. Did you know he prayed for you? He was thinking of you in this moment right here. Verse 22, I have given them the glory that you gave me. He's passing that along. Everything he received from the Father, he turns and gives to his people. Verse 23, so that the, I'm in them and they're in me, so they may be brought to complete unity. He wants you to have complete unity. Just for a second, let's forget about all the divisions and the barriers that exist in this petty world that we live in. You're not of that world anyway, remember? You're not of it, you're in it. And let's be brought to unity with other brothers and sisters and believers, sons and daughters of the Creator. Then, what happens then? Then the world will know that God sent Jesus and loved. Then the world will know by the way that you live, when you are committed to being sent into the world, but not of the world, 
to grow into unity, to reveal the glory of Jesus, then the world will know. Jesus prayed for you. I wonder, I wonder if you've been surrendering yourself to the Holy Spirit, working out that prayer in your life so you can be the answer to Jesus' prayer in John 17. That might be a good next step for you to surrender and pray along with Jesus. Send me. Echoing the, the words of the prophet Isaiah, here am I, send me. That might be your prayer, your next step today is to commit yourself to unity, to commit yourself to being in the world practically, but, but not of the world practically. That might be something you do today. I'm going to read this to you, John 17. And at the end, I will pray with you at the very end, but listen as I read through this prayer that Jesus prays right here. So it begins in verse 1. After Jesus had said this, he looked toward heaven and he begins to pray. Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people, that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory that I had with you before the world began. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. And now they know that everything you've given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. And all I have is yours, and all you have is mine. All glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world. And I'm coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so they may be one as we are one. And while I was with them, I protected them, and I kept them safe by the name that you gave me. And none has been lost except the one, the one doomed to destruction, so the scripture would be fulfilled. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I'm still in the world, so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them, I sanctify myself that they may too be truly sanctified. But my prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for all those who will believe in me through their message. That all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me. So that they may be brought to complete unity. And then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you've given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you've given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. Let's pray together. God, I cannot top that prayer. And so I merely echo it. May we be sent into a world that we are not of, so that that world would know that you sent your Son and you have loved every creation. And I pray that you would allow people to know you. Let my life and the lives of these here echo and repeat your glory so people would see you through us. I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, as I said in Jesus' prayer, three words 
you are sent. Have a great day. Serve the Lord today.